us a bit about your involvement in Formula One. Are you a big fan? Uh, I am a fan only. I have been a fan, to be honest, yes, in, in the old days, in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Now it has become a little bit silent, as I would say. What was the attraction for you for making a film about Niki Lauda? Well, I was 13 when he had the accident, and it's a very young age, to be honest, yeah, to understand what it means to be one minute in a burning car. But later on, in 2008, when I made uh, all the audiovisual stuff for the Abu Dhabi Formula One park, yeah, I reminded myself from this accident, and I said, okay, I'll write a script about it. And I called Nikki and I said, can we make an interview? Can we make a story? Can we make a documentary about it? And, and I have to say he liked it, and that's how it came together. Did you have any worry that he might not be interested in making a documentary? Um, he's a strange and difficult character, as most of the people know him, yeah. But, but at the end of the day, he asked me, what do you want to do exactly? And I said, I want to, to tell your hero's journey, which is very unique. You have, you have had almost a fatal crash, and you returned for the three days later. That's almost like Jesus. It's, it, it's incredible. It's very unique. And he said, you want to do that? And I said, yes. And he said, yes. Do you think Formula One is a very cinematic sport? Does it look good on the big screen? Um, well, if you film it in the right way, it could be a cinematic thing. I'm filming at the moment a film called The Green Hell. It's about the Nürburgring. But it's all about filming. If you film it right, it looks good. If you only watch it on television nowadays, I have to say it's boring. What, what, what was so exciting about the Formula One that you remember from a younger age than in the 70s and 80s, like you say? Um, I think the, the drivers were really characters, they were really men, they, they were challenging to say mostly their life, sitting in, in a petrol pot, yeah, in, a, in a huge bomb, in a driving bomb. And I think we understood this growing up, uh, having all the history of Formula One. And nowadays, you know everything is secure. And I don't want to be cynical, but I think it could be a little bit more exciting. Now, you're a big Formula One fan, I'm sure a lot of the people here are as well, but what can people who aren't big F1 fans expect from this film? Uh, I think it's more a film about a human, a personality, a man uh, who made a mistake, a man who maybe challenged his life too, mu too much. Yeah? So it's the background story. It's the story of a personality who had an accident and who struggled to survive and come back within four weeks. I think this is a story who, who everybody is interested in. It's not only a Formula One story. It's not about only racing cars. Do you think Formula One drivers now would even dare coming back after four weeks like Nicky did? Uh, well, if they would have an accident like this, I only can tell you they would be taken care of, they would be in a hospital, then there would be the PR manager saying, oh, we have to see what's happening, and then maybe six months later or a year later they will come back. Yeah? I think Nicky said to me or explained to me this was a professional accident and he had to come back because if you fall from a ladder and then you don't climb up, then you are in fear to climb up after a while. If you climb up soon, then you can make it and that's why he came back so quick. Did you learn anything surprising about Nicky that you didn't know before you made the film? Um, to be honest, I, I read his biography when I was a boy and I thought he's a hero. When I got to know him, and we had a very long interview session, uh, first I thought, wow, that's a strange character, very unfriendly, very, very not much engaging, and, and so, but the longer we, we talked, and the more I got out of him, I was very surprised that at the end of the day, he was smiling, he was taking his head off and said, look, the people always look at this where there is no ear. I have my cap now protecting my face, and now they look into my eyes. And so I learned that he needs humanity as well, and he's not only a tough guy. You describe him as a hero. Does he describe himself as that? Mm, he didn't describe himself as a hero. I, I think that he said, I was lucky that I didn't die, um, and I fought to come back. But I think he's, he's one of these old guys. They said, well, maybe I die, maybe not. And that's how he, sur he survived. I think he's not considering himself a hero. And finally, um, you've mentioned what you think about Formula One now. What would you do to change it or maybe bring it back to how it was? 
Uh, I think in the old times all the companies designed their own cars with different chassis and different motor capacities and horsepowers and the drivers were involved in the, in the mechanic of the car. Today the drivers are let's say marketing tools, very good drivers though I have to say, but they are put in the car like puppets and, and everything is prepared and everything is on a computer so they could even stop the car if they don't like it. Yeah? So I think more, hmm, let's say, more the driver and the machine being left alone with maybe 1,000 horsepower and more tricky tracks, not every race the same track actually, that would help a lot. Excellent. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure, thank you. thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!